Hello everyone. It's been a while that we have met for the classes uh, of because of this lockdown, and I hope uh, you are all doing well and uh, you are uh, all safe at your homes. Uh, it's been uh, we have, we are going through difficult times, uh, but we have to stay strong and uh, face the circumstances. So coming back to the lectures, we were uh, dealing with uh, the continuous time Fourier transform. and uh, we we have completed i think uh, the properties of continuous time fourier transform and we were into the analysis of uh, continuous time lts systems using ctft so i'll first give you a review of uh, the properties of uh, ctft and the ctft pairs then we will uh, go into the analysis of continuous time lts system using ctft so these are the properties of continuous time fourier transform starting with the linearity the linearity property says that a into x1 of t plus a2 into x2 of t should give me a1 into x1 of omega plus a2 into x2 of omega where x, x x1 of omega and x2 of omega are the fourier transforms of x1 of t and x2 of t respectively and the time shifting property says x of t minus t not it will have a fourier transform of e power minus j omega t not do x of omega it means that a delay in the time will imply a rotation in the frequency domain and the next one is the dual of this the frequency shifting property if a rotation happens in time domain then uh, there will be a frequency shifting translation this is also called as a modulation theorem we have seen what is the significance of this modulation theorem in the class now the time scaling property x of a t the corresponding fourier transform is 1 over modulus of a x of omega by a if i remember it correctly i have given you this as an assignment then the next one is time reversal x of minus t will have a fourier transform of x of minus omega the duality property capital x of t this capital x is uh, the fourier transform of x of t so capital x of t is capital x of omega replaced uh, the omega replaced with t so capital x of t will have a fourier transform of 2 pi into x of minus omega this is the duality property for which they have done the proof in the class the time differentiation the fourier transform of d by dt of x of t is j omega into x of omega i think we have done the proof for this also in the class the next one is frequency differentiation this is uh, differentiation in frequency domain the corresponding inverse fourier transform is minus jt into x of t and the integration or accumulation is integral over minus t minus infinite to t x of tau d tau the fourier transform of this is given by pi into x of 0 into delta of omega plus 1 by j omega into x of omega so the next one is the most important property which is convolution x1 of t convolved with x2 of t will have a fourier transform of x1 of omega multiplied with x2 of omega the convolution will become will become multiplication in frequency domain then the next one is the dual of this multiplication in time domain will become convolution in frequency domain if i consider frequency variables this, this is uh, the radial frequency variable if i consider uh, the frequency variables instead of radial frequency variables it will not have that one over 2 pi so the next one is about the symmetry of the signals if the signal is real signal then the spectrum is supposed to be symmetric then and uh, if it is a even signal if the signal is a even signal then the spectrum of the signal will be symmetric and uh, real if it is a odd uh, signal then the spectrum will be uh, odd and uh, imaginary purely imaginary the possible identity the possible identity says that the time domain the energy in time domain is equal into energy in frequency domain the proof of this is also we have done in the class let us uh, see the next thing these are uh, some important continuous time fourier transform pairs uh, for the given signal the corresponding fourier transform is shown here for the impulse function the corresponding fourier transform is 1 for a shifted uh, version of the impulse function for the delayed uh, impulse function this e power minus j omega t not 
uh, I think uh, most of this uh, we have uh, done in the class uh, when we are dealing with the proofs of uh, the continuous time proofs of the properties of continuous time Fourier transform. Uh, yeah, so let us move on to the next thing. One important uh, thing in this is the Gaussian signal. For the Gaussian signal, if you see the corresponding Fourier transform is again Gaussian. So, this is a very important uh, signal because uh, the time domain representation and frequency domain representations are uh, the same signal, they are, are of the same form. Now, moving to the next thing, this is a pulse signal or we call this as a gate signal. For gate signal, we will have uh, the Fourier transform to be a sync function and when we consider the sync function, the corresponding Fourier transform using the duality property is the gate function again. For sigma of t, I think we have seen this in class, this is uh, 2 by j omega and uh, using this we have uh, tried to obtain what is the Fourier transform of uh, the unit step function. Then uh, this is a impulse strain, for an impulse strain the Fourier transform is again an impulse strain. The proof of this I think uh, you have done it in the exam. Now let us move on to the topic of uh, this session which is analysis of continuous time LTA systems using CGFT. So, let us consider an LTA system whose impulse response uh, is given by H of t. Now, let us apply a signal x of t which is equal to e power j omega t that is it is a complex exponential signal as an excitation to this system. The output is obtained by the convolution of the input uh, with the impulse response of the system which is given by integral power minus infinite to infinite h of tau into x of t minus tau d tau. So, let us see this, let us uh, try to obtain the expression for it y of t equal to x of t convolved with h of t when we expand this we can see that here integral over minus infinite to infinite h of tau into x of t minus tau is e power j omega into t minus tau d tau. This e power j omega t is independent of tau. So, I am writing this outside and this brings down to integral over minus infinite to infinite h of tau e power minus j omega tau d tau. If you see this is the Fourier transform of h of t which is h of j omega. So, y of t the output is h of j omega a constant with respect to time multiplied with uh, e power j omega t. So, here the input uh, and the output are of the same form and hence this particular function which is complex exponential is called as the Eigen function of the system and if you see h of j omega the frequency dependent and time independent uh, constant is the eigenvalue and it is also called as the frequency response of the system. The frequency response of the system, it talks about how the gain of the system is varying with respect to the frequency of the input signal. Now, let us move on. So, we have uh, h of j omega, the frequency response of the system and if you see h of j omega is a complex number. So, every complex number will have a magnitude and a phase associated with it. Modulus of h of j omega is called the magnitude response of the system and angle of h of j omega is called the phase response of the system. So, we can also see that y of t is equal to x of t convolved with h of t. If you apply the Fourier transform on either side, then y of j omega we can see that as y of j omega equal to x of j omega multiplied with h of j omega. The magnitude of y of j omega is given by the multiplication of magnitude of x of j omega and the magnitude of h of j omega. And the angle of y of j omega is given by 
एंगल ऑफ एक्स ऑफ जे ओमेगा प्लस एंगल ऑफ एच ऑफ जे ओमेगा वॉट इज डिस्टॉर्शन लेस ट्रांसमिशन वेन वी आर पासिंग द सिग्नल थ्रू ए सिस्टम समटाइम्स वी वॉन्ट द आउटपुट टू हैव द सेम शेप एज दट ऑफ द इनपुट फॉर एग्जाम्पल वेन वी कंसिडर पब्लिक एड्रेसिंग सिस्टम द आउटपुट सिग्नल शुड बी हैविंग एग्जैक्टली द सेम शेप एज द इनपुट सिग्नल there should not be any distortion so what are the things that is allowed what are the changes that are allowed in the signal there can be a delay and there can be a gain with which uh, the input is amplified public addressing system is nothing but an amplifier of course so distortionless transmission means the output of the system should be having exactly the same shape as that of the input so the output should be y of t is equal to k into x of t minus td here k is the gain and the td is the delay when the signal is passed when the input signal is passed through the system now taking continuous time fourier transform on either side to this expression so y of j omega we will have k into x of j omega multiplied with e power minus j omega td this we got using the time delay property of the continuous time fourier transform now so we know that y of j omega is equal to x of j omega into h of j omega when we compare this with the previous expression with this expression with this expression so if you put x of j omega aside h of j omega will be k into e power minus j omega td so you can easily see that the magnitude of this is simply k and uh, the phase of this is minus j omega td this is a constant which is independent of omega and uh, here if you see the phase of this is linearly varying with respect to omega this is a very important thing that we need to see for distortionless transmission the gain which is the ampli which is the magnitude response of the system should be independent of the frequency and the phase of the system the phase response of the system should be linearly varying with respect to the frequency this is called as linear phase systems this is very much important uh, category of uh, systems which we deal with in the future class future classes now output of lti system for periodic input if x of t is periodic then we can express x of t as a summation of uh, the complex exponentials which are uh, weighted with the corresponding quotients now the output y of t is equal to h of t convolved with x of t convolution follows linearity property and hence convolution follows distribution property and hence uh, h of t convolved with summation over k equal to minus infinite to infinite ck e power jk omega not t can be written as using the distributive property of uh, h of t i can uh, take this inside summation over k equal to minus infinite to infinite ck into h of t convolved with e power jk omega not t and if you do it further this will become y of t equal to summation over k equal to minus infinite to infinite ck into h of jk omega not into e power jk omega not t this expression we have already derived in this session itself now for a non periodic signal we already know that y of j omega is equal to x of j omega into h of j omega so in order to compute y of t the output in time domain first obtain the fourier transform of x of t which is x of j omega and the frequency response of the system which is h of j omega and then multiply those two and find out the inverse fourier transform using 
this expression. Now let us move on. So, how do we solve differential equations using the Fourier transform? In another way, in another way, how do we how do we analyze LTI systems which are described by linear constant quotient difference differential equations? All linear constant quotient differential equations may not represent an LTI system, but all LTI systems are represented by linear constant quotient differential equations. The general form of linear constant quotient differential equation equations is given by summation of k equal to 0 to n a k d power k y of t by d t power k is equal to k equal to 0 to capital M b k into d power k x of t by d t power k where a k and b k are constants and generally n is greater than m. Now, we take the continuous time Fourier transform on either side of this expression. If you apply using the differentiation property of the continuous time Fourier transform, the Fourier transform of d by dt of y of t is j omega into y of j omega. So, if I differentiate this k times, then I will obtain j omega to the power k multiplied with y of j omega. So, similarly, the Fourier transform of uh, d power k x of t by dt power k is j omega of all power k x of j omega. We can uh, see that the continuous time Fourier transform uh, obeys linearity property and hence uh, we can take that Fourier transform inside this summation on either side. That is the reason why we are able to get this expression. Now, I want to find out what is h of j omega. h of j omega is nothing but y of j omega divided by x of j omega. So, y of j omega, we, we, do, we are doing the cross multiplication thing. h of j omega is equal to y of j omega by x of j omega, taking this term here. So, this is given by summation over k equal to 0 to capital M, bk into j omega to the power k divided by summation over k equal to 0 to capital N a k multiplied with j omega to the power k. So, we can obtain the impulse response of uh, this system by doing the inverse continuous time Fourier transform of h of j omega. h of j omega and impulse response of the system are continuous time you know the CTFT pairs. So, we already know that the we already know that the impulse response of the system will uniquely characterize the LTI systems and hence h of j omega in frequency domain will also uniquely char characterize the system if it is an LTI system of course. So, let us move on. Very important thing here, we can we, we understood that h of j omega is uh, related to the impulse response of the system and uh, this impulse response of the system it only talks about the zero state response. I will repeat it again. The response due to the input is only considered and the response due to the initial states is not considered. So, in order to obtain the complete solutions which includes both zero input response as well as as well as zero state response we cannot we or we may not use we, we cannot use uh, the continuous time Fourier transform. So, there are uh, other methods to do it we have already uh, seen one such method and uh, in the near future we are also going to learn another uh, tool which also accommodate uh, both uh, zero input response and zero state response. This is one of the limitation of continuous time Fourier transform we can only obtain the zero state response, but not the zero input response. So, let us move on uh, to the filtering. What do you mean by filter? A filter is a device that amplifies or pauses the signal without attenuation for the desired frequencies and attenuates the remaining frequencies in the signal. 
see there is a signal which contains both uh, the signal of interest as well as some noise attached to it in general the signal of interest will have will be band limited and hence whatever the frequencies which are out of band can be attenuated in order to reduce the effect of noise so i'll make a filter which is going to allow the frequencies which are related to the signal and of course it will have some in band noise and then i will i'm going to attenuate the remaining frequencies this if i do i'll be able to get a better uh, signal a better uh, a better and a more meaningful form of the input signal so there are generally ideal filter and practical filters ideal filters uh, uh, although they their performance is supposed to be good there are many issues involved in the design of ideal filters and uh, the reason why we need to move to practical filters we will see first let us see what are the types of filters we can have so we will have first uh, the ideal low pass filter what is a low pass filter a filter that allows frequencies that are less than a particular frequency which is called as cut off frequency and attenuates or simply removes all the other frequencies is called as low pass filter an ideal case is that for the for the frequencies which are less than omega c the gain will be 1 and the frequencies that are greater than omega c the gain will be simply 0 we can see that here in the expression as well as in the frequency response diagram then the counterpart of this is ideal high pass filter for high pass filter the gain for frequencies which are less than the cutoff frequency is 0 and the gain for the frequencies which are higher than omega c will be 1. So, this is ideal high pass filter and moving to the next thing an ideal band pass filter will have a gain 1 for the frequencies which are in between two cutoff frequencies let us say omega 1 and omega 2 and the for remaining frequencies the for band reject filter the filter will have a gain of 1 for the frequencies uh, which are not present in the band of omega 1 to omega 2 and the frequent for the frequencies uh, in between omega 1 to omega 2 the gain will be 1. In all these cases I have been only talking about the magnitude response of the system magnitude response of the filter and we uh, and I am assuming that here the phase response of these filters is linear because if I take a linear phase filter then we will always uh, assume that the transmission is distortionless we have seen that earlier we have trained that earlier next thing is what is the problem with the let us see what is the problem with the, the ideal filters this is an ideal low pass filter and let us compute the the impulse response of the ideal low pass filter h of j omega is equal to 1 in between uh, minus omega c to omega c so i am replacing the limits from minus infinite to infinite to minus omega c to capital minus omega c to omega c because uh, in the other frequency for the other frequencies uh, h of j omega is equal to 0 so this is going to become uh, if you simplify this is going to simply become uh, the sync function so the sync function it will look like this if you see that for negative time index h of t is not equal to 0 for a lti system if it has to be causal h of t should be equal to 0 for t less than 0 and hence this is a non causal system for a non causal system we can uh, we cannot uh, realize the system because we need the future values the future values of the input in order to compute the output the current output so this is the problem with the ideal filter 
So the ideal filters are non-causal filters. The non-causality of the ideal filters is because of the sharp transitions that we have seen in the frequency response of the ideal filter. So in order to avoid such non-causality, what we can do is instead of considering a gate function which is having sharp transitions as a frequency response of the system, we will take a smooth function like a Gaussian or a Butterworth in order to obtain a causal filter and a practical filter which is realizable. Now, if the order of the filter is increasing, what do I mean by order of the filter? You can say that it is the order of the differential equation as of now for your understanding. So, if the order of the filter is increasing, then the practical filter will tend to behave like an ideal filter. So, let us see an example of a practical filter. This is a well known system to you which is uh, the typical passive RC filter. Now, let us obtain what is the frequency response of the system. First, let us write uh, what is the differential equation which is governing this. You have done this so many times in your network theory course. Let us look into this practical filter and analyze this with uh, the Fourier transform. Let us write a KVL equation along this loop. You have done this many a time, so I am skipping uh, the steps. So, the differential equation which represents the previous circuit is RC into dy by dt plus y of t is equal to x of t. Let us apply the Fourier transform on either side. If we apply Fourier transform on either side, RC into Fourier transform of dy, dy by dt is j omega into y of j omega plus y of j omega is equal to x of j omega. Now, bring that y of j omega common, you will have y of j omega into RC plus 1 is equal to x of j omega, x of j omega or h of omega is equal to y of j omega by x of j omega is equal to 1 by 1 plus j omega rc. This is pretty much straightforward. I am making omega naught is equal to 1 by rc. So, this expression will become 1 by 1 plus j omega by omega naught. We can rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and denominator with 1 minus j omega by omega naught. This bring, brings out the magnitude response and phase response to be modulus of h of omega is equal to 1 by 1 plus 1 by modulus of 1 plus j omega by omega naught which is equal to 1 by square root of 1 plus omega by omega naught whole square and the phase response theta h of omega is equal to minus tan inverse of omega by omega naught. Now, we can always plot modulus of h of omega with respect to omega and theta h of omega with respect to omega. The things are plotted here. We can uh, see that this is a practical low pass filter as omega is increasing and going above the cutoff frequency omega naught, we are going to get uh, the gain uh, less than 1 over root 2 of the maximum gain and the phase response we can see it is a tan, uh, it is a inverse tangent curve. However, we always do not need to actually plot uh, the frequency response and see and find out what type of filter the given the given uh, circuit is representing. Once we obtain uh, h of omega, we can substitute the value of omega is equal to 0 in this modulus of h of omega in order to find out the value and again we can also find out the value of modulus of h of omega for omega equal to infinite. Omega equal to 0 is representing the low frequencies, omega equal to infinite is representing the high frequencies. For low pass filter, the gain at low frequencies should be greater than the gain at high frequencies. For high pass filter, the gain at uh, low frequencies should be smaller when compared with the gain at high frequencies. So, 
based on the value of modulus of h of omega at omega equal to 0 and modulus of h of omega at omega equal to infinite, we can easily find out whether it is a low pass filter or high pass filter. If it is a band pass filter, the gain at omega equal to 0 and omega equal to infinite are supposed to be near 0. If it is a band reject filter, the gain at high frequencies and low frequencies is supposed to be higher, which means that it is nearly 1 for passive filters and greater than for greater than 1 for active filters. So, with this I will conclude this session. Thank you.